everybody, this is uh, my attempt at uh, analyzing some malware. Um, first things first, um, I showed a tutorial how to remove that specific infection. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and uh, in each one of these little programs on the side here and kind of um, kind of explain a little bit of what the infection is. In my opinion, um, it's not um, you know it's not not anything to take uh, you know take to heart, but it's just my opinion of what um, this executable is all about. Um, so first we're going to go throw it in the uh, PEID um, program that looks and see if the uh, executable is packed. Um, as you can see from what I can tell there is not um, or this program is not, uh, this is not packed which is good which allows us to look at um, the DLLs and stuff that this uh, um, function is or this uh, executable is calling. Um, so the next step is we're going to go ahead and throw it in the PE uh, view here. <clears throat> and we can just kind of look through the headers um, and kind of look and see what this uh, um, executable uh, is about. Um, when we get into the file header, we can see that the time date stamp, well, as far as we can tell, um, February 18th of 2013 uh, is when this file uh, was created or um, when this file um, was compiled. Um, but yeah, so February 18th of 2013. Um, if we look a little further in here, um, we can see the um, data, the data text, our data 3, our data 2, resource, um, and other section headers. Um, what I found interesting was under the text, um, under the hints, um, actually take that back it's under the data section dot data I see that PPFT where uh, slash classes um, also a PPS authorization host I'm not entirely sure what that is I kind of looked up didn't find anything specific but it was just uh, it just kind of caught my eye because it's just kind of uh, uh, misplaced I'm not entirely sure what that means um, but going back to the uh, address table it kind of shows all of the functions that are being called um, in this uh, in this program if we go to the directory table we can actually see the DLLs and I'm going to open up another program here to show you those DLLs specifically so we'll go throw it into uh, depends the dependency um, walker and this will actually show um, the different DLLs and when we click on these DLLs we can see which functions are called in those specific DLLs I believe um, so this one shows a read file and virtual allocation um, under the user 32, uh, set foreground window, set cursor position. Um, these are just kind of the functions that are run within the user 32. Uh, the GDI 32.dll is uh, the DLL used for more of a graphical user interface stuff. Um, so this would be um, pretty much that little uh, that box that we had to type into uh, on that infection. Um, and those are just some of the functions uh, there for that. Um, add VAPI 32.dll you can see that we've got some registry settings that are set here and I believe with this registry create key those are the keys that were created or overwritten um, in the registry that allowed it to um, call the executable on startup when we went to HK local machines software or yeah software Microsoft Windows current version run um, under that run command, we had it calling that executable as well as going into the HK local machine software, Microsoft Windows NT, when log on and changing the shell to load that same exact program. Um, as you can see, those functions are called in this DLL as well. And then lastly, this is the MSV CRT DLL, which I'm not entirely totally sure um, what that is uh, yet. Um, so let me, let me close out of that. And then if there's another program we can look at is Resource Hacker. And if we just break it down, we actually see that this file must have been originally a uh, Microsoft file, um, migrate.exe, uh, file version 9. From, the, from looking at this, it looks authentic. It looks like it's all um, Microsoft Windows made it, um, but obviously what we found is that uh, it's not at all. It's a malicious program, so it's easy to see how uh, file names can be, or files can be uh, <clears throat> turned malicious um, by an attacker. Um, if we take this and 
um, we compare it to, here let me just show you. I'm going to go ahead and click the properties of this file. Um, see we have the ifgx pers.dxe, but if we actually go to properties of it and we, <clears throat> and we look under the details, we say, oh, it's a Microsoft Windows Media Services. Um, and it's copyright Microsoft Corporation. Um, original file name is migrate.exe. Um, so it looks like this was at one point originally the um, uh, valid file, but it was just turned malicious. Um, not turned malicious on the user side, but um, on the attacker side before uh, um, the user had access to it, um, if that makes any sense. Um, and then I try to find a similar version of it online to download. Um, this is the one that I found. We look at the details of that. I know MS Migrate DLL application file version name. They're almost they're similar. Uh, the version is different. And when you can take a look at the file size, the file size of the malicious file is only 47 kilobytes, whereas the file size on other Migrate is much larger than that. I'm not sure. Maybe the malicious um, migrate.exe is actually uh, packed but I'm not entirely sure um, but that's just interesting to me to see that even uh, you know the product product name version file description copyright uh, everything um, can be uh, spoofed and they could uh, uh, mislead you um, that's just my little um, I guess my little analysis of uh, the ransomware uh, X cable that I found um, and there's uh, I mean I can kinda look in here I remember when I mentioned that before the uh, actually looking at this now under our strings I threw it into Ida Pro uh, disassembler here and when I look under my strings oh nope they, they're created there you can see all the strings um, in the the program um, but what I seen, well, let me see if I can find it back in. I'm going to scroll down here. Yeah, there's that offset where it's the PPFTWare classes and the PPS authorizing host. I was trying to see if I could find where that was located at or what that was, um, but nothing came up in my uh, in my searching at all. But this is just a breakdown of the computer. Um, I wish to kind of look at it a little bit further. It's a little bit complex for me right now, um, but if we look at our strings here, um, we can see ah, the DLL that's being called, um, setting the cursor position, capture, lease capture, um, register Windows message. Um, all of these things um, are just part of this malicious program um, that can be, you know, looked to, looked into even further. But um, I just kind of this is just a brief, very short um, look at. Uh, what uh, this malicious software kind of came from when it was created. Um, but like I said, um, that's my take on it. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I could be way off, but that's just from kind of what I've been uh, what I've been finding. Um, but that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, little session. All right, thanks.